and we're live. Um, good morning, everyone. This is podcast five as part of the series of the Elevate podcast. Um, as you know, my Instagram is at how to dunk. So in today's podcast, I'm going to be talking a bit about um, my experience with vertical jump training and exactly what I did to increase my vertical jump. And I'll also talk a bit about um, my live stream from last week, which was, if you guys didn't see, it was the 10 best exercises, in my opinion, from a plyometric standpoint to increase your vertical. So I'm going to go over each of those exercises again. And finally, I'll tell you guys a bit about an exciting project I have coming up. I'm going to be, well, I've started writing up my own vertical jump program. It's going to be called the Elevate Jump Program. And this is going to be phase one. So I'll talk a bit about that towards the end of the podcast. So yeah, let, let's let's dive into it. So uh, my experience with vertical jump training. So just a bit of background history. I got into... Um, vertical jump training back in, I would say, early 2010. So um, I started watching the NBA end of 2009, and I, I really fell in love with the sport. I felt like it was really exciting. There was a lot of action, a lot going on. And it was a cool sport to follow. It was very um, interesting to watch. And, yeah, so... It started off, I just started off, I guess, playing basketball at the local courts, and I really liked to dribble a lot and take cool cool jump shots, and you know what, what kids do when they first get into playing basketball. And then we'd, we'd, pl- we'd be playing with a group of people who, um, they'd be they'd be jumping high, they'd be catching good rebounds, some of them would be grabbing the rim, some of them, some of them would even be dunking, and... I'm like, oh, wow, that that's that's pretty cool. So, like, I was new. Like, I knew what a slam dunk was, but I haven't really seen it, like, live in person. So, when I started seeing it, I realized, oh, wow, like, this is, this takes talent to do. Like, this isn't easy. There's going to be something that these guys are doing. And my initial um, analysis of it was, oh, wow, look, they're just tall. They can do it. And that's kind of what I believed. I'm like, nice. Nah, this is only for tall people. I didn't, I didn't understand that I guess shorter people could learn to increase their vertical and jump high and eventually dunk. Like I'm like, if you're not six five and above, like forget it. That was my that was my initial thoughts on it. So yeah, as I got more into basketball and started seeing people at the local courts jumping high and dunking, um I started I went on YouTube and I came across this channel called Team Flight Brothers and there was a whole bunch of these athletes that were part of this squad, and they were all very, like, different mixed heights. Some of them were really tall. There was a few guys who were my height and doing these amazing, crazy dunks. Like, there was one guy called T-Dub, I think. He was five foot nine, and his video... Sorry, his videos had, like, millions of views, and he was doing these absolutely insane dunks. Like, he was doing East Bays and... Um, double clutch dunks and and he's five foot nine and this guy was jumping incredibly high he was jumping i think his vertical was like 50 52 inches or 54 inches or something yeah it was it was nuts it was it was something spectacular to watch so that really caught my eye into the whole vertical jump scene just watching t-dub dunk and throw down (coughs) explosive explosive um crazy dunks so I was in ninth grade in school and um, I was playing basketball as part of sport and the more and more I like I was playing a lot the more and more I played you know the I could see just by playing and watching these videos and getting pumped up and you know trying to catch high rebounds I could see that you know slowly I started jumping higher and higher I guess just from the hype of it but also what I wanted to say is I grew up playing um, competitive tennis, so I was very, I want to say very athletic, but I was pretty athletic, and I was doing a lot of bodyweight training and push-ups and stuff, so I had an athletic base. I feel like that's important to say, because I remember I got a um, basketball ring in my backyard, this was back in 2010 as well, and... I don't know, we ins- I think we installed it at like 9 feet or something, we couldn't move it up to that, 
But um, the backboard was pretty high, so like we'd keep jumping and touching spots on on the backboard. And I remember one time I actually was curious to measure my jump because I was watching all these YouTube videos and they would say how to measure your jump. So I think I was measured somewhere like 26 or 28 inches. And that was just like when I was playing basketball and stuff. I wasn't even, I didn't even know about plyometrics and all that training yet. So I guess that was naturally my vertical jump based on my athletic background and all my tennis training and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool. And my first experience with vertical jump training was um, I stumbled across a program called Air Alert and I found the free PDF to download. I think it was the first one. And yeah, I just I found this workout chart. I'm like, oh, look, this is pretty cool. Um, 10 weeks of this and apparently I'll be gaining 8 to 14 inches on my vertical. I'm like, oh, wow, this is this is crazy. Let's Let's start. So literally the next day I started. So the program was like three days a week. And it was fine in the beginning, but the problem with that program is after, like, week five or six, the reps go ridiculously high. Like, they had, f like, different names for their exercises, but a lot of them were, like, they, I, mean, I, can't remember, I can't remember the first one, but it was equivalent to a squat jump, and at the beginning it was, like, 20, 30 reps, like, I used to get, I used to get crazy leg burns from them, like, 30 reps of squat jumps is insane. And then, like, after week five, it was going up to, like, 50, 60, like, 70, 80. I'm like, okay, all right, like, something, there's a catch. So, I don't think the creators of that program really understood what they were doing. I think they just sat down and they're like, okay, I'm going to increase the reps by this or that every week. But I don't think they understood the concept of power is equivalent to strength and speed. They were just kind of focused on some theory called, I don't know, what was it called? The kangaroo effect that, like, the more repetitions you do and the more your muscles and body gets used to jumping, the jumping, the higher you're going to jump, which is, I don't know, that doesn't really make sense. But anyways, <clears throat> I did the I did the program for five weeks and I saw great results because, you know, the reps was were still fine and I was, I was new to plyometrics, so this was an absolute shock to my body. This is training I've never done, so... Yeah, three times a week for five weeks, extreme leg burns, and I think it was around the fourth week, I did, we did um basketball for one of the PDHP classes at school, and there was this rim, it was a little bit lower, and like, before I started the program, I'd always try to, I guess, jump and touch it, but I'd be short by like a fair bit, and then that day, I was just curious, because I've done four weeks of this program, I'm like, oh... Uh, let's see, let's see what the deal is, so, I run up, I jump, bam, like, I, sla I slapped that ring, like, <laughs> I really touched it, and everyone saw it, like, oh, shit, man, like, that's, that's a high jump, so, that's what I knew, I'm like, wow, like, something I've been doing, like, this, this, this training, which I haven't been doing before, it's, it's working, it's helping me to jump higher, so, um, there's, there's something in this training that's, effective to to use I guess these techniques so that's when I started looking more into plyometrics and all sorts of training and stuff I didn't continue error obviously because the reps were like way too high and I knew it was just like I was busy with school and stuff but that wasn't really really the excuse it was more just the program it just seemed unfeasible yeah so I got to that mark and then I guess I kept playing I played basketball a lot, I enrolled on the school team, we played competitions and stuff, and yeah, like, every every so often, I'd I'd go back and touch that ring, and I just, I just, um, I'd be a little bit and a little bit higher, my fingertips would just reach a little bit higher, not extreme gains after that point, like, like I was saying, from week zero to week four, I made, oh, I don't know, it was some shocking gains with my vertical, just, just to touch that rim, and after that, I'd have little slow, steady ones, and, um, yeah, I don't know if I did another program that year. I don't think I did. I, I was just doing, like, um, a bit of strength training and playing basketball a lot. So, and also I was still into competitive tennis. So my vertical kept sort of increasing, increasing because I was training harder unintentionally because I was, I guess I was just playing and jumping a lot. But, um, yeah, so the next year... I remember I stumbled across another program, which was called the Jump Manual, and that was a pretty cool program, like, the reps were all very, um, 
The reps were all very practical and not too high compared to error alert, so I figured that this program made a lot more sense and there were some great exercises in it. So I think I did that for like five or, or six weeks or so. And I got some gains from it, but I didn't get the same gains as I got from error alert. I did increase some inches, but it wasn't it wasn't like when I just went from not training to doing plyometrics and then getting those crazy gains. I think my body, I think I got those gains honestly because my body was, I guess, shocked to the whole concept of plyometrics. So yeah, jump manual, I did it. Um, the reps were fine, but what I realized is the sessions were too long. Um, the workout sessions were way too saturated. There was way too many exercises that had to be done like some ex some workouts had like seven or eight different exercises and like four or five sets each and that that was just too much you know like it's like error alert you know two high reps and this one was like too many exercises so i'm like yeah, yeah it's good but you know these sessions were going for like two two and a half hours and by the last two exercises i'd be so fatigued my jumps weren't weren't um, proper they weren't at full force so I, I knew there was i knew there was an issue with it i knew that if I was to create a program, I would cut down those last two or three exercises, just so I can maintain that explosiveness throughout my workout, which is very crucial and important with jump training. You don't want to start doing half, half ass reps where you can't, you know, produce the power that you want to. So, um, did a bit of jump manual, got a few, got a little, get a little bit of gains from that. Kept going, kept playing basketball, and. 20, this is 20, so 2012 comes, midway through the year, and I've learned a lot, I've watched a lot of videos about dunking, I've watched, what, oh, sorry, I've watched a lot of videos about different exercises to do to increase your vertical, so I, I, got, I got a nice list of all these different plyometric exercises to use, and basically I broke them down into different sessions, uh, sessions. I'd put, um, I'd put five exercises per session, I'd go like four sets each, and I'd mix it up, so... I probably did that for like five weeks, and again, I saw really, really great gains. Like, during those workouts, I made sure that I was explosive on each um, rep, I made sure the reps weren't too high, I made sure the sessions weren't too long, and while I was doing that, I was also training at the gym, I was getting my bench press, my squat, my deadlift up, and those, those two complement each other very well. So, 2012, mid-year, is the first time I think I touched a 10 foot rim. So I jumped. This was in, um, yeah, this was like one of the competitions. So we were just warming up. I did a few laps around the court, did some stretches, whatever. And then I jumped, and this was a regulation 10 foot rim at a stadium. So I jumped up, I nailed it, I touched it pretty easily. So, you know, that's when I knew, okay, like I'm, I'm improving, I'm getting more gains. You know, these plyometrics I'm doing are very, very effective. So. I think I did a few more weeks of those plyos. Things things stabled out. It's not like I gained another four inches for the other four weeks I did. But, you know, it got me to that point. Now I was easily touching a 10-foot rim. So, 2012, easily touching a 10-foot rim. So, that was a huge achievement for me. So, because I, ca I calculated my reach, I knew my reach was like, I think, 7 foot 2 or something. I'm not that tall and stuff. I don't have long arms. But I calculated how, mo how many inches it took me to touch a 10 foot rim so it was 34 inches so that meant that my vertical was around 34 inches at that time so pretty pretty good achievement so far um all right so that sums up 2012 2013 let's get to 2013 i stumble across another program this time it's called the vertical jump bible by some guy called kelly and this was this was a cool program. Like he put a lot of effort into it. It was very informative. It talked about a lot of different areas. It gave um, the exercises were great. The repetitions were good. He had a, he had a beginners, an intermediate, and advanced program. So, you know, if I was to recommend a program, I would definitely recommend that one. That was a great program. So, um, that's that's definitely worth checking out the Vertical Jump Bible. So I did that really consistently in twenty thirteen. And I combine that also with um, with strength training at the gym. So I would have two days of strength training at the gym, and I do two days of the vertical jump bible. And obviously, the strength days incorporated heavy squats, deadlifts, um, 
car phrases, stuff like that. So, and I did this really consistently for eight to ten weeks. So I think that's that's how long the program ran for. And I didn't see gains as soon as I finished the program. Maybe there was some fatigue involved or whatnot. But it was until a few weeks after, or maybe even like a month or two after, um, I saw some. I saw some. Saw some serious gains. Like it was this day. I went. Just went to the courts just to relax a bit before one of my final exams for uni. Sorry, not uni. <laughs> my year twelve. Year twelve. I was in year twelve. So high school certificate. So I brought this little volleyball because I had I have trouble gripping a basketball. My hands aren't that big. So I brought this volleyball. So I was, yeah, I was shooting some hoops and then. I got warmed up, I was feeling good, I felt like my jump was good, so I grabbed this volleyball, and I'm able to grip it fully, and I got over 10 foot rim, I run up, I jump, and I seemingly get really high, I got, I've got, i gotten a lot higher than I did in the past, so jump up, I know I'm high enough, I try to slam the ball in, the ball smacks the rim and just like flies off, so... Yeah, so I was excited after that, that that exact moment. So I went back and tried, and second go, but I I got it, you know. I, I got that dunk, and I've actually posted that video a bit further down on um, on my page. You can see it's with a volleyball, and it's 10-foot rim dunk. So that was, that was a big moment for me. It was a, a very solid dunk. I got a decent amount of um, clear, clearance over that rim, and it was with force. It was with a lot of power. The whole the whole system shook. Like I could have I could have heard it too. So yeah, I would say that that probably was close to the peak of I guess my vertical jump experience. And I knew at that time I was somewhere around the thirty six, thirty seven, thirty seven inch mark. I would say. So yeah, I would say that 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 was the last proper vertical jump program I committed to and after that I was just I was consistently training at the gym I was doing a lot of upper body exercises probably focusing more on bodybuilding and but also powerlifting at the same time we do we do different different um powerlifting programs we do bodybuilding programs and we'd also have we'd make sure we were very um strict to our leg days our strength days for our legs so We'd have plyometrics incorporated. We'd have, we'd have um block, box jumps. We'd have um, what else did we do? Oh, I'll just do normal. I'll just do vertical jumps in the gym. There was this high point I would try to touch. We did explosive calf raises, uh, medicine ball slams, medicine ball throws. So we were still doing a lot of explosive training, but I wasn't focusing just on vertical jump. So all that training, say over over the next year or two years, it got probably got me a few extra inches. So. If I was to conclude what what vertical I really got to, it was probably anywhere from 38 to 40 inches at its absolute peak. Um, had I continued to focus on it past that point, would I get any higher? Um, definitely, obviously, if you keep training, you will keep increasing it. I probably went close to my... I guess there is something known as the genetic limit, so I probably was coming close to it, but... Of course, had I continued squatting heavier, had I continued incorporating pliers, whilst at the same time maintaining my body weight, that's very important, you know, increasing weight but maintaining your body weight, that's definitely going to mean an increase in explosive power. So, yeah, I would have I would have definitely gained a few inches, but, um, yeah, that, that was my experience so far with vertical jumping, that's the peak I reached, so 2014, 2015 inch. Sorry, 2014, 2015-ish. I would have been around that 38 to 40 inch mark. And yeah, it's um, it was pretty exciting. It was a big achievement for me. Someone being 5 foot 9 and never playing, never really playing the sport growing up. And then just somehow over a few years of training and passion and commitment, you know, I just got got some solid gains in my vertical jump so that was a that was a huge achievement a huge mark for me to be able to dunk on a 10 foot rim because you know when I was little and I just walk in basketball courts and I'd see these tall people dunking I'd be like oh this is not for me this is for the tall guys and everyone else in my family thought it's for the tall guys and until I started doing it it kind of 
opened up everyone's eyes. So, yeah, that's basically my experience with that. So, let's move on now to to my live stream from the for I'm um, sorry, from the other day. So, basically, if you guys missed it, I went on Instagram live. Yeah, and I spoke about basically in my opinion the 10 best plyometric exercises which I believe helped me to increase my vertical. These were extremely um, these were the staple exercises of my training. I made sure every program that I made for myself included these exercises, I guess along with a few others. But if I was to pick 10, I would say that these 10 really helped me out a lot. So, yeah, let's, um, let's go through them quickly. So I'm just going to open up my page quickly, guys, so I can have a look at the exercises I posted. Just bear with me for a second. Okay, just refresh. Alright, so the first one I posted, which is very important, is depth jumps. So the reason why depth jumps is important is because, um, it, I guess it trains you against gravity. You're basically dropping off a platform and exploding up. So it's adding extra resistance. It's not like your normal jump when you're starting on the floor, you're just jumping up. This exercise is taking some shock from, I guess, your muscles. You're learning how to absorb shock and land from your jump. But at the same time, you're learning how to explode back up from it. So the idea is to explode back up off the ground as quick as possible with this exercise. You don't want to be um, taking time. And obviously, the quicker you're able to explode back up, the I guess the more the more athletic you are or the better your vertical jump is probably going to be. So over time, the idea is to increase the height of the platform you're jumping I guess dropping off from as um that that in turn will be obviously increasing the resistance too because it's the higher your platform is you're going to see the the harder it is to really explode off that ground and also the higher you go up you're going to find that your vertical jump is going to not be as high as it was say on the lower platform so yeah it's a it's a great exercise you know, if you guys want to read more into the science of it and all, then yeah, definitely go ahead. But it's definitely an exercise that I've been using. And I've been doing four sets of six reps. You don't want to go too high off this with this exercise because, like I said, after you hit a certain amount of reps, you're training your muscular endurance. And that's not what you want to do for your vertical jump. It's all about explosive power and ability. So four sets, six reps is a good mark. If you want to challenge yourself, keep increasing um, the box or platform by a decent amount, or you can add like you can add a hurdle in front of it, and you can aim to jump over that hurdle too. So there's a lot of um, interesting variations to this exercise, and also ways to make it harder for yourself. Okay, so next we have. Sorry, where did it go? Next, I said squat jumps. Squat jumps is a very important staple exercise. It's one of the first exercises I started doing when I was doing air alert. And the squat is, you know, it's the building block of all leg exercises at the gym. So you can see why the squat jump, which is just a variation to the squat, has its important benefits. So squat jumps, I recommend... Four sets of 10 repetitions. Be explosive as you can on each rep. Don't drop too fast. Drop at, a, I guess, a nice um, balanced out pace. But when you explode up, you want to explode up as high and as powerfully as you can. So, yeah, four sets of 10 reps is good for that. Um, broad jumps. Now, broad jumps, like I said, that's an exercise that's tested in the NFL. So, it's definitely a test of... It's not just vertical power, but it's um, horizontal power too, because you're jumping for distance, not so much height here. But you are incorporating, obviously, the same explosive muscles as you will for your vertical jump. So, broad jumps is a great exercise. So, I would suggest marking a cone for your starting position and, yeah, seeing seeing how far how far out you can jump. Make sure you incorporate the arm, the arm swing. The arm swing is very important. 
for it. It definitely helps to generate some power and momentum. And find the position which you land at, mark it, and keep repeating that. You know, four sets, six repeti repetitions is good for that. Um, also, with this exercise, make sure you find a good amount of space to do it because, you know, you you definitely need some room if you're jumping pretty far. So find a nice open space, I'd say, or even if you got a decent space in your backyard, that should do. Um, next exercise, we've got tape hurdles. So I demonstrated all of these in the live stream. So tape hurdles, basically, I got two chairs, I just put a tape between it, and you just want to... Def I'm sorry, basically just jump over over that barrier or that tape. So for this, I want you to do four sets, four sets of six repetitions. It's a great exercise. You'll definitely feel your abs or your core burn the next day because you know each rep is basically it's almost like a crunch when you're when you bring up your knees to your stomach. You're kind of doing you're mimicking the um the the ab crunch exercise. So. You will feel it in your abs. It's a great exercise, great for explosive power. So I want four sets of six reps for tape hurdles. Okay, next is medicine ball launches. Medicine ball launches are a great exercise because especially in helping your standing vertical jump because think about what you're doing. You're holding a weight, a medicine ball, and you're trying to throw it up um, vertically as high as you can whilst also... Um, you're trying to jump too, so that motion is basically mimicking a standing vertical, but you're adding resistance to it, so it's um it's going to increase um going to increase tension on your body and your muscles. So over time, it will definitely help you increase that standing vertical jump, with, um, especially if you keep adding. Um, if you get, I guess, if you get stronger and stronger, you can keep adding weight to the medicine ball, and. Yeah, it's a great exercise, but also make sure you have a decent amount of space for it because if you're doing your backyard and you start chucking the medicine ball around, you're probably going to lose it at your neighbor's backyard. So find an open space. Uh, medicine balls are expensive. You don't want to be just losing them for no reason. So find a find an open space to do the exercise, and four sets of eight reps is a good a good mark for it. Okay, so let's move on from that. Lateral bounds. So lateral bounds are pretty similar to, I guess, the broad jump, except it's kind of a, um, on a side-to-side -side motion, not a front-to-back. So, yeah, so what I mean is you're jumping to the side, you're not jumping forward exactly. So lateral bounds, same idea, mark two positions with a cone which you think you can reach. Use that arm swing, jump laterally to that cone, break for a second, jump back, and four sets of eight repetitions is a good mark for that exercise. Next we have cone hops. So cone hops is one of those exercises to work on more of your ankle power, target your calf muscles, your anterior tibialis, which is the front muscle, I guess, near your shin bone. So with this exercise, you want to, you don't, you don't want to be breaking, you want to be Jumping over that cone consecutively, as soon as you jump over it, you want to jump back. So you can do it with two feet. If you want to challenge yourself more, you do it with one feet. You can go side to side. You can go front to back. You can do all sorts of variations. But make sure, you know, first of all, you're, that you're clearing that cone. If it's too high, reduce the goal height. Um, and also that as soon as you land, you're exploding back and coming back to that starting position. So you want to do these consecutively so you can really strengthen up your ankles and your and your calf muscles because like I was saying in the live stream that's really where the starting motion of your vertical jump will be your you're really pushing off those ankles so you want to make sure your ankles are as strong as possible and can generate as much power too and also flexibility this will help with um, increasing the flexibility of that ankle region because they tend to be very tight and also very ignored people tend to ignore your ankles and believe that they don't have so much influence in your vertical, whereas they're really important with the plantar flexion and dorsiflexion movement. So I think plantar flexion is when you point your toes down and dorsi is when you point it, um, point it up. And that's what you're doing when you're taking off. You know, you're pointing down as fast and hard as you can. And um, just before you point down, you're basically, you're basically pointing them up as you're doing your run-up motion. So you can see all these if you watch um, YouTube videos about 
vertical jump technique, all the um, all the different great vertical jump trainers out there will explain these things and give a I guess a more detailed scientific explanation than than what I'm doing. But I'm just trying to keep it simple for you guys. You know, the information's out there. I don't want to bloat you guys with information and that goes also back to my program which I'll talk about a bit later. So anyways, let's go to the next sorry, four sets of ten reps for cone hops is what I want. Okay, next exercise, simple practice jumps, you know. Regardless of all these great pliers that you're doing, at the end of the day, you have to keep practicing your vertical jump. You can't ignore it. That is the motion that you're trying to do. You're trying to increase your vertical jump. So you got to keep practicing your jump, you know. Think of it as its own different plyometric exercise, and it is, you know. Jumping is part of plyometrics, so. But with this, it's important because, you know, you're perfecting your form. You're getting better at your technique. And also, you know, you're... You're learning how to jump up straight as high as possible because there's very... Some people, you know, they tend to jump too much forward. They're losing a bit of height. And also when they're trying to dunk or touch a rim, they're too far away. So, you know, you got to keep practicing your jump. you got to find your sweet spot, which is, I guess, the area just under the rim where you can feel you can take off comfortably and, you know, knacker down that dunk as powerfully and as, as effective as you can. So... Got to keep practicing your vertical jump. So four sets of five reps is a is what I recommend for this. Next, we got jump rope, another great exercise to strengthen your ankles, your calf muscles, and increase explosive ability. So with with um, jump rope, you're basically on your toes the whole time, which um which like I said is going to help incre- um, strengthen your ankles and calves. So a great explosive exercise for working the lower, lower part of your <clears throat> legs. And for this, I would recommend four sets, 30 seconds, as fast and hard as you can. So let's move on from that. Yeah, final exercise is the plank, you know. Core is very neglected when it comes to your vertical, but your core or your trunk, it, it keeps your whole body locked in or together so that you're not, like I said also, with wasting Height, you know, if your body's t- um, tending to lean to one side because your imbalances or your core is not that strong, you're going to be wasting height on your vertical. So your your core is definitely going to keep all those muscles working together or in synchronization. So got to get a strong core. Strong core is so essential to increase your vertical because, as you say, when you're in mid air, if you ever saw a photo of of someone shirtless, you'd see that their core muscles are like are really prominent. They're really sticking out because the core is doing a lot of work during that vertical jump motion, so never neglect the core. So a great core exercise that I chose here is the pl- the basic plank. You know, you just lie down horizontally on the ground, lift, pop your body up, pop your butt up, and also, yeah, just hold that position, hold it firmly. You're going to shake a bit, that's all right. Everyone shakes during the plank. And I recommend four sets of 30 to 60 seconds. Of course, if you're very, very advanced and you've been doing calisthenics for a long time, you can you can choose your you can choose your time frame for it. You can see what works for you. So that's that's just my general recommendation. Of course, everything can be individualized to tailor your needs. So yeah, that's the ten exercises that I talked about on my live stream, which I believe were the most effective in helping me increase my vertical. There's also there's also a lot of other ones too that um, are similar to these exercises like. I guess I left out lunge jumps and chair rockets and all these other exercises. All those exercises will be put in my vertical jump program, which will be called the Elevate Jump Program Phase 1. So let's get into that now, you know. We just talked about 10 different exercises. So let's talk a bit about my program. I just created all the workouts yesterday. So the program, let me just open the document quickly. The program is going to run for eight weeks, and each week there will be three different workout sessions. Week, and there's going to be six different workouts. So, um, basically, you want to space your workouts out so you have enough time to recover. I use the rough guide. I said to do your workouts Monday, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. That's a good guide that gives you enough break. So, on Mondays, there's a certain workout to do. It's called workout one. Wednesdays, workout two. And Saturday's workout free. So in all your odd weeks, 
for those three days of the week, so basically week one, week three, week five, week seven, you're going to be doing workouts one, two, three. In your even weeks, which is weeks two, four, six, eight, there's another, there's a different three workouts that you're going to be doing. So those are workouts four, workouts five, and workout six. So all those workouts are written up. Um, the repetitions are very practical to do. The exercise amounts are not extremely high. I've got five exercises per session. Some sessions only have four. So, you know, you have enough time to recover and you'll also be able to focus on being ex as explosive and as powerful in each repetition of those workouts. So, and that's really what you want to target to increase your vertical. So, this is a this is a great program because I'm I've put how many have I got here? I've got 28 different exercises which I was doing. I basically done all of these when I was training and yeah, they all work very well. So I'm expecting you guys to get some very solid gains from this program if you follow it properly. Um, it's going to have... So let's, let's get into the contents page, a bit of the sections which I'm going to be incorporating in this program. So like I said before, I'm not going to bloat this program with um, tons of information and different parts about, you know, jump jumping and the science behind the vertical and all this history. It's not necessary. Every program's done it before. Um, you can read these articles by yourself if you really want to know the history of vertical jumping and also um, yeah, and also an in-depth analysis of the science behind it. Like I've posted plenty of things about form technique and the science on my page. So you can scroll down and see that. You can go on YouTube. Um, find other trainers who have posted videos about that. I'm going to post videos about that in the future on my channel. But this program specifically, I want to keep it simple. I don't want you guys to read 50 plus pages where you're going to get bored. And I know what everyone's going to be doing. They're just going to go, yeah, yeah, they'll read the first two pages. They'll read the intro. They're all going to skip to the workout program. That's not what I want. I want you guys to read every bit of this program. And for that reason, I'm going to make it very short. I'm going to try to keep it like 10 pages at like at most, you know. If it goes a little bit over, fine. But I'm going to keep it very short and concise. I'm going to keep the paragraphs a bit brief. I'm going to keep the English very simple to read. Um, anyways, let's let's go through um, what I'm going to be adding in this program. So we've got. I'm going to put a bit of an introduction, which is going to tell you about... Um, actually, I've done that already. It's just going to tell you about what this program is and what you're, what, what it's hoping to achieve by the completion of it. So, after the intro, I'm going to put a very brief part on um, diet and supplementation, basically what you want to be eating. Or I'm not going to be putting a list of all the healthy foods, but I'm going to put give some examples. I'm going to say, like, I'm going to talk a bit about, I guess, macronutrients, a bit about protein, carbs, fats, and... Also, what kind of diet and what kind of foods you want to be looking for, and I guess also calorie intake in order to stay in good shape, keep a low body fat, which is extremely essential in getting gains from programs like this, and also just becoming a better athlete. You really need to keep that body fat low. You don't want excess weight to hold you back. All right, so after that brief part on diet and supplementation, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to put a video link for to me basically demonstrating each exercise. I'm going to put a written description too. So I'm going to introduce you to all 28 plyometric exercises that are going to be included in the Elevate program. Uh, after that, I'm going to put a little bit of info on the workout program just, just so I can um, explain things more clearer to you so there's not no confusion. I know what the common frequently asked questions are when it comes to these um, workout programs. So I'll just put a bit of info just explaining the program to you guys. And um, yeah, I guess it ties back on the intro also what you're trying to achieve in it. Um, a bit about the sets and repetitions. Also what you want to be doing when you're warming up and cooling down. Um, also general info about how much you want to rest between each set. Um, if you're feeling really sore, should you do that next workout should you take a longer break. So I'll put I'll put a bit of info about all those areas here. Just give a general explanation about the workout program. Um, the warm-up. Uh, sorry, the next session will be the warm-up. So <coughs> I'll give you guys a, I would say a 20-minute, 15 to 20-minute 
dynamic warm up you can be doing before each workout session that's very important to get your muscles and your body get blood flowing get your heart rate up a bit dynamic warm ups are very important to prevent injury so i want to give you guys a, a nice sample dynamic warm up you can be using before these workouts um next session the workout program table so that's what i want you guys to follow you can print a second uh, sorry a separate document from it you can cut it out from the book if you guys want to buy a hard copy i guess or yeah just stick it up on your wall i'll put like a checkbox check sorry tick box or checkbox list after each um week so you guys can tick off each week that you've done and see your progress um Yep, that, then that will also be an eight-week program, so I'll make a nice table for that. So after that, we got the cool-down. I'll give you guys a sample cool-down, which I used to do, just to get the body um, nice and cooled down from the workout session. And what have we got after that? Okay, after the cool-down, I'm just going to put a small section on some basic important tips which you guys should be doing in order to jump higher. So... I'll talk a bit about like recovery, um, what you want to do in your workouts, what you want to do in your off days, how often you want to practice your jump, all sorts of general information and just some tips which I found very effective that helped me jump higher over the years of training. Alright, so we've got that. Next is just a basic conclusion. Uh, then I'm going into the frequently asked questions or FAQs. And then we've got finally looking onto phase two. So this program will be followed by another program. And that program will also incorporate some, some basic weight training exercises that you will be doing along with your plyometrics. And if you guys already have like a weight training routine, it's fine to add this exercise or plyometrics to it. But this program is more tailored to, towards people who are, I guess, I just get getting into vertic the vertical jumps. I know a lot of you guys are very young on my page, so obviously I don't want you guys just to jump into heavy weight training straight away. I want you to mature a bit, um, grow properly. So plyometrics is a is a sorry, it's a great weight free way to build up your explosive power. So yeah, phase two will incorporate more weight and stuff. So that will come out a little bit later. For now, I'm just working on this program. So. I'll put plenty of information about that once this one's done, but <clears throat> yeah, that's basically it. That's um, that's the Elevate Jump program, which I'm hoping to be releasing in a few weeks. I'm going to be putting it up on Amazon Kindle. That's what I signed up for yesterday. I'm going to put it at a very cheap, low, affordable price, so everyone can have good access to it, and that it's financially feasible too. So I want everyone to benefit from it. And also, I will put a, pr a few promotions up. Um, I'll let you know about this further on my page. But for after these promotions start, for the first 10 people that DM me, I'm going to give a certain code to use. When you DM me that code, I'm going to give those first 10 people a nice free giveaway of the Elevate Jump program phase one. So they're going to get a free copy for it, for, oh, sorry, of it. So yeah. I want all you guys to stay tuned on what I'll be doing, um, I guess, posting on my page. Stay tuned with How to Dunk. Stay tuned with the, um, the YouTube channel, which I'm hoping to post more on. Um, the Elevate podcast, which is what I'm recording now for SoundCloud. So keep following me. Tell your friends about it. And make sure to watch out for that promotion. When that promotion starts, I'll let you guys know. And the first 10 people who do it, who DM me, in my inbox, or send me an email to howtodunk25 at gmail.com, and you're going to have to send me that code, and you will get a free copy of the Elevate Jump program, so watch out for that, guys, and yeah, I'll provide, you, I'll provide everyone with plenty of information about when I'm planning to release the program, and yeah, when it's going to be up, so I hope this program all helps you guys, I'm putting the like I said, I'm adding the exercises, which have really helped me over the years. So I'm going to put a lot of effort into making this program. I'm going to keep it simple too, so it's not over bloated like I told you guys. So you guys can all, you know, comfortably read it. And yeah, so um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Subscribe to my SoundCloud, the Elevate Podcast. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell anyone who wants to jump higher, anyone who wants to build muscle or just... um. Elevate and become a better person in life in all areas. You know, tell them about my page. Tell them to follow me. I've got a lot of more live streams coming up. So 
I'll try my best to keep everyone engaged. I want you guys to keep interacting with me, with my page. Keep coming in the live streams. Keep watching out for all these posts. There's a lot to learn. I've got a lot of experience. So, in all areas, basically. So, yeah, keep a lookout for my page, guys. And I um, really appreciate your company for whoever's um, listening to this podcast. And I'll see you guys for podcast six.